Nice to play guitar again. I haven't touched a guitar in a while. <laughs> it was hard to track you down. You were such a busy guy. I know uh, it, it's um, it's out of control. It's it's getting less out of control now though. But I'm almost done with the. Last year was the craziest year of probably of my life. Just about. Huh. I had a film out at the same time that I produced. And talking also, about Rumble. Right? I had a film called saw Rumble. It. Yeah, you saw Rumble right yeah. in the theaters. And I loved it. I loved it. Thank you. It. Thank yeah. you. But it, you know, it, we made Rumble and. and it, I had no idea it was going to do so well. It was just mm -hmm. making a documentary, a history documentary, right? And so when it was getting close to being finished, I ended up producing a record um, for fun with a, with a Japanese friend of mine named Koshi Naba. He was kind of a big superstar. He sold 100 million records in Japan. And <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, he's like the biggest <laughs> selling star in the history of Japan. Right? Right? But he called me out of the blue while I was finishing Rumble, and he's like, oh, I'm super uninspired. and. 
I can't write a song and I'm, you know, I'm depressed. Like, can you come to Chico Tokyo and let's try to write a song? I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we ended up writing a song. We wrote this. We we made this album. And I was in. In since he's, you know, we had a regular record contract. I was able to hire. We worked all over. You know, we mm-hmm. cut cut some drums in Nashville and then I flew to LA the same day and cut Taylor Hawkins from the Foo Fighters oh, on yeah. a song and, and, and drums there and then we'd go to you know we were cutting all over the world hmm. and because we were kind of trying to make it an enjoyable experience for him as well so you get to go to places and go to dinner at nice places and mm-hmm. cities and, and work with great musicians and so we were working with the you know the guy from Jamiroquai here and the guy oh, from, from from uh, Baco here and blah 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 Jamiroquai. and this thing turned into something like a real record originally it was just going to be a Let's do something just... What kind of music is it? It's kind of weird. It's like I didn't want to make a Stevie Solis album. I didn't want to make a Koshi Nava album. So we, we both love The Clash. Oh, okay. And we both love, uh, you know, and I always, you know, I started off playing with George Clinton and Bootsy mm-hmm. Collins and I'm a funk guy. So I went back to what I was doing when I was a kid in London in the late 80s when I got out of high school. I went to London. I was producing bands like Was Not Was and weird bands and, and using this funk sort of pop synth bass music mm-hmm. and then I was just kind of putting guitars like the clash on top of it kind of yeah. like contrasty uh, all funky kind of pop using some of my hip hop roots and and but keeping a punk rock sort of feel to it you know you know it's like uh, everything had a rhythm like a you know just kind yeah. of rhythm and kind Bar-cordy. of recording and all the you know we made this record and it ended up being like whoa this is actually the record came out Right at the same time as my f- film came out. My film came out at Sundance. So I just saw that like a month ago. How long had it been out? It just came out. Okay, so I saw it when it came out. Yeah, it you was were, in the theater in, here. You weren't in it very much. You should have been in it more. Because I made the movie. I'm the producer. I'm going to blow myself up in the film. <laughs> but, but, so, you, but you could have. Yeah, no. But so the, film, the film wasn't a vehicle for my... Yeah, for my uh for my ego, it was more of a vehicle for a true story that needed to no, be that's told. That's a great story. I, I, there was so much in there I didn't know. I, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I was in the film more. The director had me in the film more and I, really? made, him, I made him cut me oh, out of okay. it. Yeah, yeah, I made him cut me out of it. Because I didn't want to look like I made a film to grandstand myself. Yeah, but you really know the story. And, and there's so many other it. great people in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was yeah. cool. Yeah, we have everybody. Somebody needed to do that. You know, we, we recorded some, we filmed some of the film. Well, I'll, get, I'll finish, get to the film in a minute about okay. how we did it because we did some of it in Austin. But we. What happened was the film came out at Sundance. We didn't think it was, we didn't think it was gonna win anything or do mm-hmm. anything. We were just doing it for PBS, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, Arte France in Germany, and who paid for the film. Hmm. But it came out. I booked a tour in Japan for January because I'm, I'm not gonna go to Sundance. So it's like, we're not gonna win. So what? Mm-hmm. I don't want to be there partying for no reason. And I get to Japan. My tour sells out. It's like sells out in three minutes. Seventeen dates sold out in three minutes. Mostly because my partners Kosu Naven. We had Matt Sherrod from Beck and Crowded House on drums and uh, Amp Fiddler from Parliament Funkadelic and Seal playing keyboards. I put together a really cool yeah. band. And um, hmm. the tour sold out like that. And then the film went at Sundance. So then my life just yeah. became chaos from January last year till, well, next no. week, th- this Saturday, I got to fly to Palm Springs and speak at the Palm Springs Film Festival for Rumble. But I'm mm-hmm. almost done with it. But my point why I was gone so much is because uh. every other week I was flying, I was playing concerts, I was doing stadium dates in the summer in Japan and China coming home and doing you know can and the, mm, the film and I was constantly stuff. back and forth uh, from musician guy which I don't do too much anymore did and they show that at South by or will they mm-hmm. South by didn't want it they didn't because we won at Sundance and come on South and Robert well, Robert Trujillo told me and maybe Charlie Sexton said it too I don't know mm. but the unwritten rule is if you're at S- Sundance mm. they don't want you at South by but I spoke at South by mm. not on for rumble but for music Huh. Yeah. I'm speaking. Um, I'm speaking at South by this year again for Rumble though because yeah, that makes sense. The, the film was turned into a school curriculum. Whoa! Because it's this new history that no one knew about. I didn't right? know any of that. Yeah, the Native Americans. Is, <laughs> I'm from Oklahoma. That's even better than know winning know. awards, you know. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, it's way better. Yeah. And and uh, it was turned. Stevie Van Zant has a company, and mm-hmm. he, he called me and he said, he goes, well, I want to turn that into school curriculum. I'm like okay, and so <laughs> it's Jersey. so they're going to be teaching the subject, the, the history film that I made is going to be now school curriculum because new because it's a history that mm-hmm. is true but just no one knew about. Right? Yeah, huh. yeah. So it, it's been a mad crazy year. So that's why. Wow. But the yeah. good kind of crazy. Good crazy. Yeah, good, good crazy. crazy. And I, I, I didn't, I wouldn't awesome. even be here today if it wasn't for you. I go, yeah. ah, I got it. I'm a persistent guy. <laughs> I was like, oh, this guy. he's gonna <laughs> No, but thanks so much for coming by, and and you didn't even have any of your gear ready, no. so yeah, but man, you pieced. Well, you know what? You. 
I've become a bit of a, of a, of a, I've turned into that guy. I've got a tech in Asia, and he has a pedal board, and a lot of my stuff I keep there. Uh -huh, I have yeah. a tech in Europe, and he has a, my pedal board in Amsterdam, and a lot of stuff I keep there. So when I fly, I do fly dates, I don't have to take anything mm -hmm. but a couple of guitars. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And this was one of my famous idol maker guitars that's, um... Is this from a bracelet? It's from uh, it's from the custom shop. I go make it look like a yeah. yeah this is I'm a, always this, wrong I on go, relics and stuff. No, it's a relic. Yeah, it's I hard mean, it's to brand tell. New. I always it looks think like it's, it's thirty years old. Yeah. Right, I go. I want it to look like it's thirty years. I found yeah. a picture of some old Les Pauls at, at the famous custom shop in Germany at the Warwick factory. I can do anything I want. Huh. You know, um, I sit in there with guys like Phil X and stuff. We all go to Germany and we sit around in this factory, state of the art factory. And you got every kind of wood from all over the mm, world dope. to choose from and pickups which anything we want knobs anything you want like <laughs> like if you can see this you have to get shots of it later my inlays are a native american mm -hmm. guy with a big headdress That's wearing headphones know. wow you know it's like I, you tattoo. can do whatever you want <laughs> and the guitars are insane right and do you ever test them and see how far they will Go with you. Yeah. <laughs> Give them some crazy. Well, at NAMM show this year, I'm going to have one of these that's completely chrome with an aluminum neck. And aluminum fretboard. Why not? And I'm like, uh, they're like, it probably won't sound good. I'm like, who cares? The TSA. It's going to look so cool. They'll really love that coming to the x ray machine. Oh, yeah. And I feel <laughs> like a giant arrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, uh, does Framus make their own pickups as well? or They do. You know, people don't know this, but Framus. In the early days, like in the 50s, back in the day, like, you know, Bill Wyman and those guys were playing mm -hmm. famous basses. Mm -hmm. um, Billy, a guy called Billy Lorento or Billy Lamento, I think it was, was his name. He was actually, that, he was a big pop star in Europe. Like, not Italian. pop, but like jazz, right? And Billy Lamento was actually Bill Lawrence. Mm -hmm. So Bill Lawrence mm -hmm. left Germany, moved to America, and became Bill Lawrence. Wow. And I actually have Bill Lawrence pickup that I have in here. I collect wow. old Bill Lawrence pickups because they sound great. So they don't really make their own pickups. Maybe they have some, but but you know, hmm. I can get pickups for free from just anybody I want, pretty right. much. So right. I try all the time. And wasn't Bill Lawrence was the guy where Seymour Duncan learned his craft too? Right? Every I think everybody learned from Bill mm -hmm. Lawrence. Huh. Bill Lawrence was kind of a weird Let's guy. Give him a shout out here, yeah. Bill Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. Himself so out there. Bill Lawrence was the uh, is the tone king, man, the yeah. tone king. I, you know, okay. I, 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 when we have this interview, you got to promise me though. When we talk about famous people, it's not name dropping. These are just things that happen in my life. Okay, oh, okay. friends. But, yeah. But, but, yeah, but people yeah, are going. Oh. So you can't tell a story about someone if they're famous because you can't. You, you know, it's stupid. But I'm just mm -hmm. telling you. So I got an email three or four days ago from Alex Lifeson mm -hmm. from Rush. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a, he's a super cool guy. I still need to give him a shout out here. Alex is the yeah. best. Alex. Alex is amazing, but you know, it's, Rush. we like to drink tequila together. We both collect tequilas. So Alex, I w there's all these documentaries on Rush on TV right mm -hmm. now on Showtime and all this stuff. I don't know why. So I've been trying to create a Strat version of this guitar, Strat style, Strat pickup, mm -hmm. uh, different wood, you know, using the wham whammy bar. Maybe whammy, bar. maybe not. Yeah. yeah, some with, some without. But my point was, I was looking for. I'm messing with pickups mm -hmm. in different woods, and and uh, I was watching this Rush thing on its Showtime or something, and Alex went through these years during like when they were playing, yeah, yeah whatever, that Lime Light and all those songs, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And he was using a Strat, mm -hmm. so I said, Oh, Alex, I'm watching you on TV right now. <laughs> How did you get your Strats to where they sound so? good next to your Gibsons, meaning all of a sudden mm -hmm. it doesn't sound all small and thin yeah, and quiet yeah, yeah. and your Gibsons are all that. Yeah. And he, I didn't know this, I couldn't see it on TV. He had switched the back pick about to a Bill Lawrence humbucker. Oh. But it was an old Bill Lawrence again, mm -hmm. uh -huh. right? Again, the Bill Lawrence uh -huh. pickup with uh -huh. that killer sound and that's what the whole story uh -huh. is about is that Alex was using a Bill Lawrence even back in the day. At least he and, told you a secret. Oh no, guys. Even though you saw it. <laughs> you know what I find? I find that most people will tell you any secret they have if they've already, yeah. they're already rich. They've already got it. Right. <laughs> Doesn't have to go around. If they're already loaded, <laughs> and and the other thing is, is that sometimes those secrets still don't work. Like I don't know if you guys ever played with Billy Gibbons, but when you play, anybody out here listening who's played with Billy knows it's like you could plug into whatever Billy's plugs into, and you can do whatever it is he says he's doing, and use whatever pickup he says he's got in there, and and you don't yeah. sound like Billy Gibbons. <laughs> right. You don't yeah, sound yeah. like. But isn't that generally the case? Yeah. I think of the know? great guys. Yeah, the great guys. It's in the hands. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fingertips. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. That's awesome. So okay, so you still promoting Rumble, and you finished that record with your friend in, in Japan. I finished it and we toured it, and um, and I've already um, 
paid the house off with it. It's old news now. Yes, yeah. so, I'm writing a new one now, though. So I was just going to ask, so does that mean it's going to slow down a little bit for you? or It's going to slow down a little bit because mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm starting to write new scripts now for a new series, a new TV series. Because I produced television series in Canada. I've, I've had one I did 39 episodes of hmm. that's finished and I did it. What I'm was that new, about? That one was a, a comedy show um, called Arbor Live hmm. and it was the first time I'd ever produced television and I was actually starring in a show too and I took a Huh. Couple, it was about three Native American guys. I'm a Native American. Mm -hmm. um, Adam Beach, who's a pretty famous oh, actor, yeah. and, and Eric Schwieg, who's a, in a ton of big movies, Last of the Mohicans, and he's mm -hmm. a pretty big star, Native star. And we played three guys. He was Eric, Adam was Adam, I was Stevie. And we had a, a music television show, which we really did. And we didn't know what we, do, we were doing, which we didn't. <laughs> right. And it turned into chaos. Very, very authentic. authentic. Very authentic. <laughs> yeah, so like, you know, we'd have, we would create these scenarios, though. You know, the bands would really play, and I'd really do interviews like you're doing now. Yeah. And, but then there would always be some problem. Like, um, you know, one time we, um, we all, um, yeah. Steve Vai was going to be on the show, and he had this new uh, enhancement pill that makes you play faster ah. called Vialis but it, but it, but <laughs> we ate got didn't get the Vialis we ate the Viagra so <laughs> so we all had these fake wieners in our you know we'd walk around with Boner Sorry like, and we, we didn't tell anyone on set so we'd show up on set to interview like Tanya Tagak or somebody who was playing with uh, you know with the chick from um, the Sugar Cubes um, Bjork and, York, and you know we'd walk up and we'd walk up and, and we'd be like banging your pants yeah. so sorry you know, so. and we'd interview and they were like the people were uncomfortable it was really bad or like uh, Motley Crue was on the show and oh, you gosh. couldn't do this in the US could you no. I don't know it was on Canadian not on TV. It, was on yeah. Canadian, it was on Canadian network too. Canadian stay yeah, we were on nighttime though we had to be on 3 a.m. no 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 10 a.m. <laughs> here it would be 10 p.m. 10 p.m. <laughs> yeah but then like we had Motley Crue on the show and and Tommy Lee had these 3D glasses with these underwear and he really had them in his in his dressing room, uh, and he had a Sasquatch on him. So I, you know, I wanted him for my friend's mother, I said, or something on the show. And he's like, "No, you can't take him. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna sign him and auction him off." So I broke into Tommy Lee's dressing room and I stole the underwear. I mean, we really did shit like this. Yeah, right. And but Tommy was in on it, but it looked like he wasn't. And, and then uh, like we had Chad from the Chili Peppers on one time, and mm -hmm. Chad. Uh, was nor, nor, narcoleptic, mm -hmm. so to, he'd be he'd talking sleep, and he'd just yeah, fall asleep, fall asleep you know? yeah, yeah. and uh, he'd be passed out. And we and then Eric found him on the couch asleep and thought it was Will Ferrell. And, yeah. and <laughs> but we did the Will Ferrell, we did the Will Ferrell Chad Smith joke years before, before they, they were doing it on TV. Jimmy Fallon and stuff. Oh, yeah. They do look alike. Yeah. Yeah. And so I ended up going to New York City with Bill Aswell, who okay. was super hardcore, you know, and he he just had a big hit with Herbie Hancock with Rocket and and um, Iggy Pop, and he did Cold Metal, which I really loved, and the P.I.L. Plain Rap album. And, mm. and so I, I went with Laswell, and I had worked with Laswell be, with Bootsy Collins before, and, and he's a real asshole, mm. but he's fucking awesome, and mm -hmm. he's like a, the, the right kind of asshole. It's like, once you get to know him, you realize that he's not an asshole, he just has a zero. Yeah, low tolerance. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you'd be in the studio with Bill Laswell, and like, Fucking Miles Davis would walk in. Mm -hmm. and he'd sit there and you'd fucking get all. I'd have to take a crap. And get all nervous. <laughs> <laughs> fucking uh, when Miles was in the studio and I was making color code at Platinum Island Studio one night and he was just sitting there watching me and watching me the whole night and it fucking freaking me out. <laughs> and I had heard horror stories that were, were like super cool guys like Doug Wimbish, who's the coolest of the cool, uh, walks up to him. You know he's in the Sugar Hill Gang and he walks up to Miles Davis and he'd be like. Oh, Miles Davis, I, Mr. Miles Davis, I've been wanting to meet you my whole life. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And Miles Davis would be like, Where's well, here's your big chance. Oh. You know, I just roast them, right? right? It's like, so I wouldn't say a word yeah, to him. I didn't say a word to Miles because I was afraid to, I was afraid move, to say though, anything. That would ruin it for you. Yeah, yeah. so then late night, I, I finished some guitar tracks and I, I walked out of the studio. I was in the room at Platinum Island watching TV. He comes walking out with a big ass bodyguard and uh, he's leaving. So he looks at me and he's. This is a true story. I swear to God. He goes, <laughs> like, that's what it sounded like to me. Yeah, that's yeah. all I could hear. <laughs> I didn't understand a fucking word he said, not one word. And so I just, I didn't know what to say. So I just go, I was going to say, Excuse me? You know, I was like, oh, Hey, man. I get yeah, right. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on, he goes, And he got to look at me like, Right and he on. walked out. But I have no idea to this day what he said to me. And, and <laughs> Probably I, good. I, I don't know. <laughs> but my point is, it's like, what did Jack Miles Davis spoke to you? And I have no idea what he, he probably said. probably did the right. I was like, like, what a goon. Yeah, he probably dude. looked at me like, you punk ass. <laughs> I don't know, brother.
I have a question for you. Yeah. So with all the adventures that you have been through and everything, what does playing guitar still mean to you? You know what, I, 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 I've never really been that into playing guitar except for when I was a kid and I first started. Mm -hmm. What I've really been into is writing songs. Mm -hmm. And I use the guitar, oh, I never pick up a guitar to practice. Lately I've been practicing, I must admit, because, because when I went to Framus and started building up the Framus roster of musicians, um, the first guy I brought over was Phil X. Mm -hmm. And Phil X, um, if you don't know him, go online and check him out. He's probably the hottest, most popular mm -hmm. guitar player in the world right now. He was big on the Hired Gun documentaries. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And too, they asked yeah. me to be in that one, too. I just never got around to filming. Guys on that. Yeah. Well, Phil, he sits next to you, and, 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 and he makes you feel like, fuck, I sure suck. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's a great feeling, because it makes you think, oh, fuck, I need to get my shit together. Yeah. And now I find out that Phil X like watched me play at Massey Hall when I was 23 years old. You know, in Canada. Probably, yeah. No, I feel that way. Yeah, and he's and he watched me play there, and he said he studied my shit, uh -huh. and now I'm like really ashamed of myself because he's killing me, right, mm -hmm. with my own shit that yeah, I used right. to know how to do that I don't know how to do Ooh, anymore. I forget. And so he made me want to practice. So I've been practicing more lately, but I didn't practice forever. I usually most, I usually mostly use this guitar to write songs, mm -hmm. and that's mostly and that's mostly my biggest, my biggest thing. Although. I do like to get into some jam. Like if I could sit around and play, uh, you know, like if I could go back and play with a band of gypsies or something, I would still do that. And then I'd get back right. into my guitar. Mm -hmm. I did have a band with Buddy Miles and Bootsy Collins and we did some shit like that. But um, but let's say, I mean, you could be a keyboard player or a violin player, but you picked the guitar. Yeah. You know, so there must be something that fits your personality. Just, I, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know. It. I started with the drums and then I thought, the drums, man. You gotta have a truck. Yeah. You gotta be the first guy at the gig. Then you're, <laughs> then you're the last guy to leave. And the girls are all and, gone. Yeah, yeah the girls are down. gone. And then everybody <laughs> wants you to take all their shit in your truck. So I, so I'm like this. I, I got a guitar. I got a guitar, and as soon as I made it big and became like a millionaire, I bought a you know a little tiny two seater Mercedes, so I couldn't haul any yeah, gear, sorry, man. and I couldn't I couldn't haul any yeti around <laughs> but a chick or you know one buddy. That was it. And that sounds like such. I like saying shit like that. It makes me sound like an asshole because it really cracks me up. So I hope, I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> Nice. Right, so we got five. So. Okay. So you know, uh, we got these guys here, local guys, Ostonia and whiskey, and they, they sent us this beautiful bottle of whiskey. That's nice. So we want to try that with you. We're pretty okay. We're pretty and, uh, but first, I want to say, uh, Lasan, my friend Lasan from B Wine Day, she selected those guys. Can you do that once again? One more time. Yeah, you want to see them? It's a beautiful bottle. Can you put it back here? So here's what she says about this drink. Let me read this for you. <laughs> Uh, oh, they got a best in class award for corn whiskey. Whiskies all around the world. Not for the faint hearted, this is a bold, fulfilling sip with a comfortable taste of spice on the finish. Unmistakably rye in this mash bill, calling for attention on the palate. That's, um, I, I, that's my description of myself when I'm perfect. eating a chicken in a bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Attention to detail. Yeah. <laughs> Are you that mashable on the palate? Yeah, that's your palate. You can mash me on your palate. Is it refined? Here you go, Stevie. Great to have you on the show. Never. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a generous pour. Well, Mr. Ellison. I've been in the middle you. of a 10 day fast, too. It's going to be a, right off the fast with a Here shot of whiskey. <laughs> for breakfast. Right on. Whatever time it is. Time doesn't exist Oops. in the studio. So, prost to good music. Prost. And good company. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Estonian Cheers, guys. whiskey. Ah, that is good. That's smooth on my palate. It's pretty spicy, yeah? I think that's really fucking good. <laughs> I'm sorry, you better beat me. <laughs> nice. Whew. Well, thanks to Estonia. And, uh, yeah, Where are you from? Aren't you from Austria? I'm from Austria. I just talked to Gudrun this morning. Oh, I love her. Gudrun Cold Love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to hear something funny real fast? I know you're running yeah. out of time. Is that, uh, is um, when I, I, I've known Gundy since I was a kid, right? And I'd always go to her club. Sometimes mm -hmm. I go there to rehearse when I'm on a European tour and I'll use her place to rehearse at. We're talking about a place in Austria called Blusiana. And yeah. it's on this beautiful Vineyard. lake in the Corinthian mountains. Yeah. And I go there all the time. And uh, all she used to talk about, Del Castillo, Del Castillo, uh, Del Castillo. <laughs> and and, oh, and yeah. Robert, Robert, Robert Rodriguez's sister, you know, uh, Patricia Vaughn, Del Castillo, 
Castillo, Del Castillo. So then I moved to Austin, and the first people I meet is Del Castillo. Del Castillo. Yeah. I'm like, I know everything about you guys. We had him here. Patricia too. Patricia was gonna yeah. help me buy help me buy a house. They've like, been on the show too, by the way. Oh yeah, okay. those Del guys Castillo. are insane. Right? Oh yeah. yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that Come was on. crazy. Just have to hang. Yeah, let's play some. <laughs> All right. Yeah. C, can you play in C? Which which C sharp for you? Uh, C sharp is a D for us. That's pretty good. Thanks for coming our way. All right. on the show, Stevie. Awesome. That Thanks could have been coming. on an Alice Cooper album. <laughs> right? And we'll see you guys <laughs> in two weeks again at Austin Guitar Heaven. Rock on, people. Awesome.